Once again, twirling through the years, we arrive in 1987, 22nd of March specifically. What horrors and delights will be uncovered herein? At number 10 and slipping down, it's the wonderful Debbie Harry and her memorable French kissing in the USA. A song which proves even at the positively decrepit age in pop star years of 42, she can still sexy it up with the best of the gals. Number 9 is a band I'm seeing this weekend, The Angels. Australia's nastiest, most hard-rocking, most underrated band of the late 70s to the end of the 80s, with their apocalyptic version of The Animals, we gotta get out of this place. Of all the bands in the world, I would say I have seen The Angels the most times live. I owe this to a combination of their relentless touring schedule in the late 1970s, and my ability to bluff my way into pubs when I was 15 years old. Number eight is the hairiest band on the list this week, Swedish metal behemoths Europe, with their frankly ridiculous The Final Countdown. The lyrics declare they're going to Venus. Are they aware that the atmospheric pressure on Venus is 90 times that of Earth, and we're evolved to conditions where the atmospheric pressure is one times that of Earth? or that the median temperature is 847 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure would cause them to burst and the heat would cause them to burst into flames. But it gets worse. What's gonna happen with the heat and all that hair product they're wearing? Boom! And how do you plan to get to Venus? By donning a pair of black and white Nike Decades and drinking some funny tasting Kool-Aid? Ugh, it's no wonder I don't listen to the lyrics. Number seven is New Water with Bizarre Love Triangle. The odd thing about this record is that in their homeland of England, where they are gods and can do no wrong, this record didn't even crack the top 50, whereas here it was the second biggest of their eight top 40 hits, the biggest being the rather pallid 1988 remake of Blue Monday. The hits keep right on coming, kids, with Cameo's timeless Word Up, the kind of song that everyone who was there remembers where it was they were when they hear it. Tight and snappy and funky, straddling the borderline between the still party slash novelty music that was rap and Prince-like rock. Six was as high as these bopping NYC funketeers could manage, but I doubt few only made number six records are as fondly remembered. In a move that will surprise no one, number five is next. And it's John Farnham with his follow-up to his chant dominating You're the Voice, Pressure Down. I can't explain how, but this record seems to have become popular with local hip-hop acts who will beseech one another to be like John F and take the pressure down when beefs or whatnot crop up. Now, very odd. Great record, fresh as a summer breeze, but truth be told, by this point, John Farnham didn't know how to make a bad record. At number four, it's A Walk Like an Egyptian by The Bangles, which is all well and good unless you're playing in a pop-punk band called The Egyptians. Honestly, we're on Wikipedia and everything. At the time, and then you lose a lot of cred, and we didn't have a lot of cred to lose. Plus, we didn't look as good in spandex, so it's no competition, really. Number three is the most interesting chap on this week's chart, a certain Boris Gardner who's down from number one last week with I Wanna Wake Up With You. A real bolt from seemingly nowhere, Gardner was in fact a top session bassist in Jamaica in the 1960s, working for Byron Lee, Duke Reed and Scratch Perry, most notably on Junior Mervyn's Police and Thieves. He played on what is widely thought to be the first reggae record, Larry and Alvin's Nanny Goat, and then, long after he'd been consigned to the pages of history, he records this treacly confection, and hits number one in the UK and Australia. And then he disappears again. Number two is the much beheld Kim Wilde, who's still hanging around the charts with her high energy, or whatever version of Holland Dozy or Holland's You Keep Me Hanging On. Last time we saw this was back in January when it was number seven on its way to the very top, 
Go Kim, go! And once again we return to the cockamamie cornucopia that is the fantastic world of facts. Biggest mover up the charts this week is a much maligned Stacey Q, whose We Connect is up a whopping 18 slot. Stacey Q can henceforth be known as the new Engelbert Humperdinck. Biggest sagger, drooper, plopper and dropper is Michael Hutchins of NXS fame, whose solo single Rooms of the Memory is down 14 places to 41. Highest debutante this week is the only band who could rival Europe for her suit over abundance. Bon Jovi with their eventually the rise to number three recent McDonald's ad, Living on a Prayer. It was their second hit here, You Give Love a Bad Name, tickling the lower realms of the top 40 four months ago. Bon Jovi only ever had three top 40 hits here. John Bon Jovi had two additional solo hits, so clearly their devoted audience is an album-oriented audience. And the emeritus record on the charts was, I hate to say it, The Lady in Red by Chris de Berg, which was in for 25 weeks and then dropped precipitously some more than 25 places to leave the charts next week. In the good old USA, number one was Lean On Me by Club Nouveau, a modern update of Bill Withers' classic, which in my opinion was nowhere near as awful as it could possibly have been. And in the green and pleasant land, the numero uno was Mel and Kim, with respectable in for a solitary week at number one, and it was pretty much exactly as awful as it could have been. The number one album in town was naturally the soundtrack to this year, John Farnham's Whispering Jack. Well, that's the serious part of the presentation safely negotiated, so it's time for everyone's favourite poo-flinging paradiddler, Monty the Safety Monkey, to wash his hands ugh, and drum us down into the number one spot. Number one is the indisputable Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, and that other guy from Wham!, with I Knew You Were Waiting For Me at the first of four weeks aloft. It's typical 80s rock R&B fluff with a few gospelish touches here and there to indulge Sister Re and give Michael something to aim for. I was stunned to learn in the research for this piece that Aretha Franklin has only ever had three top 10 hits in Australia and only one of them was from her beloved period on Atlantic. There is no justice. And thus we farewell our week, this week watching it recede like a sticky palm print on an escalator handrail, off, back, into the past, that most mysterious of foreign countries.